everybody. In the past, I've spent time redoing unsuccessful work. Today, I thought I would see what I could do if I started with scratch paper. So these are papers that I've used to remove some paint from paintings, to test out some materials, to literally wipe my paint pen off, um, and just to have on the edge. These are all edge pieces uh, if I'm going to be painting something else or just need something to pick up extra paint. So I picked these two pages and I'm just gonna work and see what happens. It's a bit of a challenge for me. The good news is these two kind of went together. So at least at the beginning, they start off similar. So at least it gives me a chance of having a cohesive piece from the start. But I really didn't have a specific plan other than, you know, my usual MO. Just start applying paint and see what happens. I've been on a bit of a pink kick lately with the Celadon Green. And this was a lot of fun. It took me a longer, a lot longer than I thought it was going to take before I got something that I was happy with. Um, but I really enjoyed the problem solving aspect, you know, with an unsuccessful painting. The bad news is it was unsuccessful. The good news is if I kept it that long, there was something about it that I really liked. Scratch paper didn't necessarily offer that because it was completely unfinished. There was just, right, some various random colors on a page with no attempt at composition or anything else because it was just scratch paper. And the process of working this and just putting layer upon layer upon layer was really exciting. And sometimes that was stressful and annoying because I didn't always know what I wanted to do next. But nonetheless, exciting is exciting. Sometimes those are the most exciting things when you don't know what to do next. So I'm using this wood, just small wooden, I don't even know what to call it. It's from, my kids have those scratch paper sets where you get the black paper and then you scratch through it with the wood stick and it's rainbow colored underneath the black. That's what it is. When they lose them, I claim them as my art supplies. I've been working this color palette again and really enjoying it. So these are some purples and blues mixed from phthalo blue, a little bit of black, I believe. And what else is in there? It could just be phthalo blue, black and white. And then the pinks are from pyrrole red. Occasionally I'll do alizarin and crimson as well, but this is pyrrole red with a little bit of yellow in, in it. As I'm going, I've used some, you know, some water droplets from my spray bottle just to create some more texture. And I really like it when the colors show through between layers. All right, so I'm using this red, almost straight red, to get a glaze going. So just a very, very thin layer of paint that I wipe on and basically wipe it right, right off. Now time for collage. You know I love a good stripe. Gotta work some stripes in. And I'm really partial to black and white stripes just because I like that high contrast. You do not have to go for high contrast. You can use much more subtle things. Make sure you're using your style. 
and things that you're drawn to because that's the only way you get art that's yours, right? If you copy someone else's likes and dislikes, that's fine. You might make some interesting things that people like, but if you don't like it, it's going to get old really fast and it's not ideal to <laughs> copy someone else's work. But, you know, you can copy their process in terms of, you know, painting, then collage, then more painting, etc. I love learning about other artists' process. It's such a unique, personal thing when you find something that you like doing and it works for you. So learning about how other people do it and what they're successful with is fascinating to me. Thank you, YouTube, for the peaks inside <laughs> other artists and how they work. And thank you guys for watching me and being interested in how I work. Because this is scratch paper, it's not very thick. You know, it's not high quality watercolor paper. So you can see the edges are curling up a bit. This is 80 pound paper. So it's not the thinnest paper, but it's not the thickest either. So I did end up um, taking some gloss medium and using a scraper just to spread it around the back of these as well, which helps flatten everything out. I'm mainly using a color shaper and then my catalyst wedge for this project. No surprise to many of you, I'm sure. Sometimes I forget that paintbrushes exist. I'm working on that. <laughs> As a mom um, of three very, you know, I won't say needy, but attention seeking children, I really like the catalyst wedge and the color shapers because they're so easy to clean. I don't need to worry about brushes drying out while I'm tending to whoever needs what. Just moving some paper around to see what, what can go where, what my options are. Now I could have cut off the extra tissue paper there. I decided to keep it on just to create the slightest um, bit of, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of what it is. A veil. There we go, Jackie, use your words. The slightest veil just to make it a little bit foggy in that upper left hand corner of the right piece. And it just offers a little bit more texture too. Subtle difference, but the subtle differences all add up. Now, these so far are pretty subtle and not a lot of hard edges, which I enjoyed. I tried really hard to add some very stark black and white collage in um, I honestly don't know if I should have tried harder or if I should just, you know, if, if, well, whatever. I didn't add it ultimately. So you could argue if that was the right choice or not, but I really, again, this was really challenging for me. It's a lot to think about because it was so subtle. I, you know, a lot of you are probably saying like, that's not subtle at all which is probably also fair. <laughs> but for my work, this feels subtle. Lots of subtle shifts between colors in different areas. Um, it, it, was, it was a very different way to work for me. And I think it looks like my art at the end when all is said and done. But the formation of it was very, it felt very new.
And again, remember, this started out from a piece of scratch paper, two pieces of scratch paper. And I don't even see, I see very little showing through from that original scrap paper. So you may think, well, why don't you just start with a blank piece of paper? And I could have. You can do. The thing that the scratch paper, the thing that makes the scratch paper unique is that whatever's on the page is something that you can react to. So while it's not necessarily informing my marks now, it did start me off heading in one direction over another because of the marks that were originally on the page. Every mark you add to your painting helps shape what the next mark will be. Assuming you're present and looking at your painting while you're painting it, I suppose if you're blindfolded, it wouldn't make much difference. So I made a ton of thin layers on both of these, just a ton. You can see they're not very opaque, I'm trying to keep them transparent on some level. I'm adding another glaze here. It's very important if you're going to do some glazes where you wipe the paint on and wipe it right off um, with like a wet wipe or, you know, something. It's very important to have your painting dry before you start that. If you have wet paint and you're trying to do um, a glaze on top, it's all going to turn to muck, right? You're going to be mixing the color underneath with the glaze. And that's not, if that's what you're looking for, that's fine. But if you're trying to do a, a glaze, that's not going to be helpful. I wasn't sure what to do with the bottom right. So I ended up just going, you know, just making a big commitment to add white there. It's a lot of uncertainty in making these, which you might think is unpleasant, and sometimes it was, but also it was very exciting because I never knew, I mean, I had no idea what these were going to look like at the end, none. And I liked working on them because, I mean, they're definitely a, a pair at this point. You guys can decide, <laughs> you can let me know if you think there's still a pair at the end. But there are a lot of similarities. Same color palette, some of the same shapes, right? The red arch shape, the black and white stripes. the pieces of my children's homework, the dots and the math problems. It's very similar, but definitely not the same. I thought I needed some more small marks, so I added this Neocolor One Crayons. I think I overdid it a bit with that red on the left, but alas, not water soluble, can't do a whole lot about it. I want to push some of these back a bit. The orange is water soluble, so I'm adding gloss medium here so that doesn't dissolve. really was happy with that, how the richness of the red came out. And it was a thicker glaze. And this one, again, same steps, but I wiped off more of it. So you can see the outline of where I scraped it. All right, I decided I needed something bold. 
So I went with my trusty paintbrush on a stick. Still not sure if I like that line work on the left. On the right, I really like it because it's bold but also fits. The one on the left side, uh, I wanted to try and push some of that line back with using the colors on top. Apologies if you can hear my children. It's almost Thanksgiving and my kids are off school now. So I'm glazing again with some of the quinacridone gold just to warm it up a bit so it's not so such a dusty pink. And I'm working to bring the white down so it's not only on the top. Just adding some pen lines very thin pen lines and then a little bit of china marker at the end. I so appreciate you guys watching these videos. I'm very thankful for all of you. If you're celebrating Thanksgiving this week, have a wonderful holiday. Eat lots of food. If you're not celebrating the holiday, enjoy your week as well. And I'd love to hear back from you. Do you guys do this with your scratch paper? Any paper you just have hanging around, do you try to make it into something? I usually use it for collage paper, but I wanted to give this a go and I'm, I'm very glad I did. So keep me posted. Let me know what you're up to this week. Have a wonderful week. Bye.